Welcome to the video on Big Data. This video is an overview of Big Data, its challenges, distributed file system, Hadoop, and its file system. What qualifies as Big Data? When the amount of data is huge, sources of data are many, generation of data is at a very high speed, there is a variety of data types. What is unstructured data, with respect to Big Data? Social networking sites, like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, and YouTube, receive a huge volume of data on a daily basis. Facebook receives around 100 terabytes of data, Twitter around 400 million tweets, LinkedIn, and Google+, tens of terabytes of data, and YouTube has a fresh video uploaded every minute, for around 48 hours. Another example can be cited from the airline industry, for a cross-country flight. Here, a huge amount of data is generated from the sensor data. It would depend on the number of commercial flights, or the amount of information generated per engine, every hour. It would count up to some 2.1 billion of terabytes of data. So, as we can see, huge volumes of data is being generated, but, as the number of users keep growing, storing, and processing the data becomes a challenging task. This data holds a lot of valuable information, it needs to be processed in a short span of time, for companies to take strategic decisions, for improving their top line, or bottom line figures. Traditional computing systems cannot help in these fronts. IBM's definition of big data has four dimensions. Volume. If data is huge, in TB, or petabytes, or exabyte. Velocity. Data streaming into the system in high speed. Variety. Different types of data, like image data, sensor data, email, video, and so on, including structured data, as well as unstructured data. Veracity. Data having anomalies, ambiguities and consistencies, and, incompleteness that need to be addressed before the final analysis. This data can be generated either by humans, like social networking data, or, by machines, sensor data. While analyzing this big data, the major concern that data scientists face is, in maintaining the privacy of the data. They commonly use the practices of either keeping it anonymous, or restricting the access, as per generator's consent, thus maintaining confidentiality. So, how do we process, and extract valuable information from this huge volume of data, within a given time frame? Now, memory storage is cheap, so storing terabytes of data is not a challenge. Also, processing power has gone up, and has become very cheap. Then, what's the real challenge? Technically, the challenge is on the data transfer through, input or output channels. And, from the business perspective, the challenge is to analyze the data accurately, in a short time. Let's see an example. Say, we have a single machine on, which there are four input-output channels, each with 100 MBs. So through four channels, 400 MBs of data transfer can happen. Hence, for reading 3 TB of data, it will take little less than 2 hours. For companies with thousands of TBs of data, it could be a huge problem. So, instead of storing data in a single machine, we can distribute the same in, say 10 machines with similar configurations. By doing this, it would reduce the data transfer time to around 15 minutes only. Hence, distributing the data across multiple systems, could be a step towards the solution. This is where, Hadoop comes in. Today, the leading big data technology is Hadoop. This is open source software for reliable, scalable, distributed computing, and provides the first viable platform. The big data analytics, Hadoop, is already used by most big data pioneers. For example, in LinkedIn, it generates over 100 billion personalized recommendations. Instead of storing the data in a single location, we have clusters. There are two types of nodes, data node, and master node. The master node is called a name node. It stores the metadata, and the directory structure, that is, which data is stored where. 
the data node stores the actual data. Now, to move, or write a data, we have a client which is responsible for the same. It will go to the name node, and the name node responds by the location, at which it would be stored. Data nodes are commodity hardware, and prone to failure. Hence, instead of storing in one location, we use data replication. After the client has written the data, it responds back to the name node. This is how the data is written, and read. This is called the Hadoop Distributed File System, HDFS, which is one of the major components of Hadoop.